All right, now in part three of unit one, we're going to look at the interactions of the Native Americans and the new colonists coming in. So Native Americans, uh, the explorations and settlements of the English and the American colonies and Spanish in, the in South and Central America often led to violent conflicts. Shocker. Uh, the Indians lost their traditional territories. They fell victim to diseases that had been carried from Europe. And, you know, the Europeans just thought them as savages when really they were very sophisticated peoples. So we also see the rise of slavery. Um, we see the growth of a plantation-based agricultural economy in the hot, humid coastal lowlands of the South, which required cheap labor on a large scale. Um, fewer and fewer men wished to sell themselves into servitude, so a new source of labor was needed. The first Africans were brought against their will to Jamestown in 1619. They worked on the tobacco plantations and this development of the plantation system in the colonies demanded large numbers of slaves to keep the economy going. Um, some Africans worked as indentured servants, earned their freedom, and then lived as free citizens during the colonial era. And eventually larger numbers of enslaved Africans were forcibly brought to the southern colonies through the Middle Passage. And this uh, development of a slavery-based agricultural economy eventually led to a conflict between the North and South in America, known as the American Civil War. So foreshadowing for you there. If we look at this map, we can see slave trade from Africa to the Americas over about 200 years. Um, you can see that the majority of slaves really went to South America, Brazil, and the West Indies. Um, but we still saw a very large number of slaves coming to uh, North America. This is an example of what a slave ship would look like on the Middle Passage. So each of those little, like, bodies, that's a person. They were shoulder to shoulder. They were chained where they were. It's not like they could go up on the deck and get fresh air. No, they were chained exactly where they were for that two to three month passage across the Atlantic. Um, some people estimate that it was about half, uh, a third to half of all passengers going through the Middle Passage would die on the way due to diseases. Um, and it, it just, it was a horrible situation. Um, and yeah, that's where you went to the bathroom. That's where you slept. That's where you ate. That, that's, that's where you lived for those two to three months. If we look at this map here, you can see the different differentiations between um, colonies. So you have the New England colonies in that light red pinkish color, the middle colonies in light yellow, and the southern colonies in the darker yellow. Um, so I know a lot of people tend to forget or don't like to think about Maryland being a southern colony, but it was. Um, especially for these purposes, it's considered a Southern colony. Um, so just make sure you remember that as we go forward. As for the economy of New England, um, they developed one based on shipbuilding, fishing, lumbering, small scale subsistence farming, which is basically farming enough for you and your family to survive. It's not really your, you're not really making a ton to sell, um, and then eventually manufacturing, because they didn't exactly have a great um, a great area for agriculture. It tended to be rocky soil. Um, the weather and climate wasn't really all that great in New England for agriculture. So that's why they had to focus on like shipbuilding, fishing, other things other than agriculture. The colonies were able to prosper, though, reflecting... Puritan's strong belief in the values of hard work and thrift, um, or saving money and not overspending. As for society in New England, it was based on religious standing, and the Puritans grew increasingly intolerant of anybody who challenged Puritans' belief in the connection between religion and government. 
In fact, it got so bad that Rhode Island was founded by the dissenters that were tired of being persecuted by the Puritans in Massachusetts, which that just is mind boggling, right? That the people who came to America to escape religious persecution ended up persecuting people so bad that they formed their own colony. That's, that's pretty bad. Um, as for religious intolerance, the Puritans believed that demons could possess and ha uh, cause harm to men and women. So witches were people who were in league with the devil. So any unexplained phenomena, like death of a livestock, disease, seizures, fits, they were blamed on the devil or on witches. And the Salem Witch Trials of 1692 are largely believed to be because of disputes between families. And because of these disputes between families, 14 women and five men were hanged as witches. I'll post an extra video uh, link in Canvas to tell you more about the Salem Witch Trials. As for the middle economy, yeah, the middle colonies and their economy, uh, the middle colonies developed uh, economies based on shipbuilding, small scale farming and trading. And cities like New York and Philadelphia began to grow as seaports and commercial centers during this time. As for society, had a bunch of different religions. Um, so you have the Quakers in Pennsylvania, the Huguenots and Jews in New York and Presbyterians in New Jersey. All of these groups generally believed in religious tolerance. So remember, it was the middle colonies founded as a mixing bowl of people looking for religious tolerance and people looking for economic opportunity. So they were able to establish these colonies as ones that were respective of other religions, respectful. Um, these colonies had more flexible social structures, and they began to develop a middle class of skilled artisans, entrepreneurs, and small farmers. Now, the South, they were based on plantation economies. Um, they grew cash crops, tobacco, rice, indigo. All of these would be then exported to Europe. Further inland, in the mountains and valleys, the economy tended to be based on small-scale subsistence farming, hunting, and trading. And there was a strong belief in private ownership of property and free enterprise within this colonial life. As for society, Virginia and the Southern colonies had a social structure based on family status and ownership of land, very, very similar to England. The large landowners dominated colonial government and society, and they maintained a strong allegiance to the Church of England and social ties uh, to England as well. In the mountains and valleys, uh, society included members of Scotch-Irish and English descent. So you don't see as much of that focus on family status and ownership of land. Politically in the colonies, we have the first meeting of a representative government in Jamestown in 1619. Remember, that's the House of Burgesses. Uh, the New England colonies used town meetings um, in the operation of government. If you've ever seen the TV show Gilmore Girls, they have regular town meetings. That's actually a very good example of town meetings in the colonies as well. In the middle colonies, they incorporated a number of democratic principles that reflected the basic rights of Englishmen. And southern colonies tended to have stronger ties with Britain, with planters playing leading roles in their representative colonial legislatures. Now, while the cultural foundations were British, um, American Indian and African cultures influenced every aspect of colonial society. We see Native American influences with democracies, conservation of land, traditional foods. Um, African, we see traditional foods like okra, black-eyed peas, kidney and lima beans, deep frying, gumbo, fufu, millet bread. Um, Nursery rhymes like Chicken Little, Br'er Rabbit, Br'er Fox, rhythmic song and dance, spirituals, blues music, basket weaving, and a little bit of voodoo. We also see during the mid-1700s the Great Awakening. Um, this was a religious movement that swept both Europe and the colonies, and it led to the rapid growth of evangelical religions like the Methodists and Baptists. They started to challenge the established religious and governmental order, 
and started to lay the foundations for the American Revolution. So that kind of gives you a preview of what we're going to go into in our next unit.